show where aspiring voice actors, established VO pros, and curious fans alike get to meet and learn from the mega successful talent in voiceover. Hear their personal stories. Find out how they became so successful. Learn their secrets and join them at the top. Come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. Seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of VO Buzz Weekly. We're glad you're with us. Am I welcome too? You're welcome. And actually, we need to welcome all of our new subscribers. Yes, indeed. Thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel and downloading the app and rocking us out on iTunes. We really appreciate it. We've got viewers all over the world, and you, everyone's discovering our show. Like each week, we get new viewers and, and new comments. And so we're really glad. Yep, yep. And we're getting some people really, really excited about. Uh, watching us on uh, on iTunes because they can just be doing all kinds of things around town while they're still enjoying catching up on the show. Yeah, because they just listen. They don't Absolutely. have to watch the video. And then later on, if you want to see some visuals. Because mm -hmm. some things don't make sense. Exactly. <laughs> um, so we have a great show for you guys today. We got Ivy Eisenberg on mm -hmm. the show. She is a casting director and anybody into animation, video games, all that interactive stuff, you need to know yeah. what these people are thinking and their process of how to do things in order for you to get these jobs. Mm -hmm. So yeah. man, do we got a great show. Let's go talk to her and get some work. Want to? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, you guys, we are so excited because our guest is a respected film television, animation, and video game casting director with credits like Call of Duty, Robot Chicken, and Trip Tank, just to name a few. So we are going to get buzzed with the force of nature behind Ivy Eisenberg casting the fabulous Ivy Eisenberg. I'm so well, glad you think I'm respected. Like, this is the first time in 15 we, years I've heard that. My we goodness asked a gracious. few people and they said. <gasps> I'm already impressed. They're yeah. already impressed. I don't was think we need to do the show any longer. No, they were not a relation <laughs> to Oh, you. okay, good. You Actually, she might them, not respect so me. I don't know. I mean, she is a Jewish mother, so she's just, just hypercritical <laughs> yeah. of everything. Is she already critiquing what you're wearing right now and how you look right now? Or oh, is she, she going to watch this? I mean, who knows? <laughs> I mean, like, the thing is, is she barely stayed up for Robot Chicken half the time. Mm -hmm. And then I think my sister called me, I don't know, a few Wasn't months ago. Was Robot Chicken on at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Midnight, yeah. Midnight. Yeah. Yeah, but my sister called me uh, a couple months ago and said, Oh my God, Ivy, I saw your name on TV. I'm like, I have been in casting for like 15 years. I'm yeah. like, Ames, what the F do you think oh. I do? Like, oh my do you God. not even yeah. have a concept that of like my really career? That is really funny, man. But by the same token, she works in marketing, like business to business. And you have. And I'm like, what do you do again? <laughs> like what? she? Because it's... Um, mm. A mobile app that this, that, and the other, and she writes up things for the. Mm. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. Makes for fun yeah. holiday table talk. I right? know, right? right? That's when you find out what yeah, your like, relatives so what are you do right. during uh, the holidays. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, listen, we're going to dive in because we have so many cool die. questions yeah. for you. Um, and, uh, and you have so much knowledge for mm. all of us. Mm -hmm. So, give us a, a, a typical day, okay? Of when you hold like, on when you're <laughs> when you're actually in the process of casting like a big show that you can't okay. talk about or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. A, a typical or, day, right from the moment you wake up in the morning. What are those days like? Yes. Uh, well, I do think that I like casting because there aren't any typical days. Yeah. And so what's nice is every day is different in the sense that there are different roles, different projects. Um, usually, I'll juggle a couple of things at one time. So I'll go from project to project, role to role. Um, I, I think that's the part I love about it is there isn't, I think I would go just bat, you know what, crazy if my job was like typical, where it was well, mundane I didn't, I and it was talking like, about yeah. that it no, is no, typical. no, for yeah. sure. But I mean, but what I'm saying is, you know, like we said, I talked about my sister working in marketing. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like when she wakes up, she does the same thing every day and she has this set task list, you know, and gets up, makes the coffee, makes the calls, types up the stuff, makes the calls, drinks the coffee, goes home and does it again. Yeah. And so what's interesting is 
since I, I spent six years working at MGM, working on Stargate, Stargate Atlantis. And for me, that was always like colonels and creatures, colonels and creatures, right? Always like military people adding to the Stargate yeah. um, group or like aliens that spoke in this kind of arch, you know, tone that we were trying to kill, you know. Yeah. Or, um, <laughs> Now that my career is more of a hybrid, um, meaning that for a lot of video games, for example, I'll do performance capture casting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and for the animated series, obviously, it's voiceover. So what's neat is if I want to work from home or from the bathtub, I can literally get hours of work done just soaking in the tub wow. or in my yeah. pool, listening to MP3s of auditions if it's like a pilot or something. This is what I was wanting to yeah. know here. Right. This so is I the don't juice, have to baby. Be. It's and the thing is, it's on her around. No, it's, it's true. true. While she's working. <laughs> It's true. And the thing, you know, it's so interesting because obviously I can't do that for performance capture casting because that's on camera. So people come right. in, I'll usually rent a giant space um, and they'll run around. If it's a first person shooter, they'll run around with guns and, mm -hmm. you know, move, get down, you know. Although like, putting them in the pool and making them do it in your pool could be an interesting. <sighs> I'm just saying. She'd probably get so the military. It, it so. kind of is that slow motion. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? But no, I don't ever like. I don't ever cross those boundaries. Yeah, but no. um, very but this, good. Very this good. role requires a no shirt. So yeah. no, I would never this do that. This is a cabana boy. Yeah, for and there's a the couch um, over there. You know what's funny is I actually. This is sort of creepy. I probably shouldn't tell the story. But when I worked at MGM. We worked on species um, in the casting department, and it was like species two, three, four, five, blah blah yeah, blah yeah. blah. And because the Natasha Henstrich character, her you know her drive is to procreate and pop populate the world with these like alien babies. Right. There's always a scene where she shows booby. So in two, three, four, five, da da da. da I mean, all of the pre reads, all of the, like the callbacks and stuff, fully clothed. Then the executives were like, well, she's going to be naked, topless in some of these scenes. Like, we had a whole meeting about how do we figure out what the boobs look like underneath and whether they're, like, attractive boobs. <laughs> oh, my God. These are the problems, Savior. <laughs> oh. So how did you figure it out? There must have been something I behind don't, it. I, I, look, I look at, you know, show business is art and commerce mixed. You know, and sometimes things are a work of art, and sometimes it's for commerce, and mm -hmm. the balance is always different on each piece. Um, for something like that, I, I felt really, I personally felt really uncomfortable if that was the focal point of how the casting process would yeah. work. Right. So basically, um, at the time I was working with another casting director, um, and he and I basically said to the team, like, okay, if there are two people that you're that are absolutely equal in every single way, um, acting wise, credits, same pay, same everything across the board, equal, equal, equal. Right. We will ask them to do a private session in a swimsuit. Because nice. it, you know what I mean. Yeah. Why sure. you don't need to examine the fucking boobs right. yeah. to see if they're good enough to be in a direct to video. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean. Yeah. <laughs> Like, or at least, if you okay, do that, you get you, double not, scale. These are not, right. The boobs get paid, too. I'm just right. realizing, I see her, Natasha sometimes hiking. Right. So now I'm going to be like, oh. No, but it wasn't. <laughs> but no, we didn't do the, the first one. We did, like, the sequels, yeah. which yeah. were sequels. not for theatrical. They were yeah. direct to video or video on demand as they, you know, they transitioned yeah. to that. But I was like, what? What do you know? This is these are the boobs. Who fucking cares? Like, yeah. you know, make yeah. sure she's a good actress. Make sure she can remember yeah. her lines, and you know, and that's if the it. boobs can act. Now that's a trick. Right. Um, so when you're not casting boobs, from so your pool, no. So when it's voiceover, when yeah. <laughs> sometimes you know I'll have back-to-back -back series in voiceover. I have two shows that I'm working on now. One's called Trip Tank, and it's on Comedy Central. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other one's also right now on Comedy Central called Jeff and Some Aliens, which is actually going to start airing, I think, uh, middle to end of September. <clears throat> so as I get more and more immersed in the voiceover world, I have an office on Larchmont. And I go and, you know, I'm listening to these MP3s and da 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 auditions, whatever. And I'm like, why the hell am I paying so much money for an office when no one ever comes here? Wow. Like, because... 
because my video game clients, I go to them all the time. They never want to come to me. Yeah. Right, right. Plus, my office is probably, you know, the size of, of this space. So for first person shooters, there's no running around. Right. Right. And so I can do the film stuff in my office, no problem. So usually uh, once or twice a year, I'll do a couple movies for Universal. Um, but for, you know, for voiceover, like, why yeah. am I paying, you know, yeah. so much money a month to have a fancy little office on Larchmont? I know why. Yeah. Tax deductions. Why? You know, That's but I could do that home it. office thing. Yeah. Right? right. I could do but that so, home office. But so my home. speaking of auditions, yeah. how many auditions on average do you listen to for a single role? So many. <laughs> um, I, I like to go overboard. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm an over everything. I'm an over... You know, sharer in my personal life. Mm -hmm. I over deliver. I over everything. Um, I think I don't actually. I, th I don't know what the typical casting director. How many? Mm -hmm. I'm always surprised because in the past I've tried to partner with different people, and I'm like, well, we got to see like at least thirty to fifty more people, and they're like, why? Let's just get, send them these ten, and like, well. You know, do you know these people? If you know them and you hate them, okay. But if you've never met them, great. Awesome opportunity to get to know more people. Because, you know, I've been doing this 15 years. And there isn't a role now where someone can say, you know, okay, we need to cast this role. And it's always, like, in two days or three days or by tomorrow or whatever. Yeah. Right. And there isn't any type of role where I can't say, here's five ideas. And I think that's... Over 15 years, auditioning right. more people, more people, yeah. more people mm -hmm. than are necessary. You know, I don't want to do the minimum. I want to go overboard so people are like, oh, my God, we have so many awesome choices. We can't decide rather than, God, we can't find someone we like. Exactly. Right? You yeah. know. What yeah. do you need to hear in, 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 the, in, the, in an audition? What do you need to hear in order for somebody to even get a call back? Like what, what elements need to be in that? Oh, my gosh. Well, for um, for voiceover, for me, working in comedy, obviously they have to be funny. Right. You know, I like to listen to their demo reels also. Really? Uh, yeah. You go that I, far? You listen to the audition with every single person? No. no. You, when I, that, no, when I you narrow You're right about down. doing that over everything. That's why I don't have a life. I'm not, I'm not married. My goodness gracious, no girl. No kids. Not even you a might be My getting plants are some, dead. Uh, your plants are dead. You might be getting no some emails from these episodes, Ivy. You never know. Some people have gotten, you know, hi, I'm not interested in voiceover, but I'm interested in you. So Sweet. Just say it. So, I'll take so it. is basically the funny, like they have to make you laugh like, or? Well, like, yeah. Well, I work in comedy. All my animated stuff is all comedy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So usually you can hear if someone has great comedic chops. And I have, I save everything. I'm a, I'm a, an audition hoarder. I'm an audition hoarder. Good job. As a matter of fact, I just recently moved and I had headshots from like 1999 of actors. Wow. And some of them I'm like. Did you call any of them? <laughs> no, no, I mean of like everyone. I, I have yeah. everyone's headshot. I mean, I'm looking through it and, and, and you know, I, I, my God, it's like rip torn from like 30 years ago and like just just so yeah. I, I just kept I keep every, I kept everything. And so now that we have the technology where you can back it up and have backup drives and da da da. Right. I mean, it just makes me more cloud. of a hoarder. Yeah. Yeah. Cloud, yeah. Everything. So now I have like every person that's ever come in, I have them somewhere in a backup drive. And what I like to do is I like to kind of load them, you know, load the backups time to time to my laptop. And I, you know, if someone goes, oh, I want to pitch this person, I go Boop, type up their name. I listen to the MP3 or I watch, because I also do a lot of independent features, I'll watch their um, audition for such and such and so and so. Right. And I go, yeah, no. And I also have little notes next to them, like, you know, not very compelling or, you know, um, didn't do their homework, you know, mm. amazing, really intuitive, connected, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll do like a one word thing. Awesome. So I'm like, oh, well, I, I remember I liked them. Even if I need a reminder, you know, because right. yeah. if you saw one person in 2001 and let's say they moved to New York to do theater and you haven't physically seen them since in terms of audition skills, you don't know if you liked them or right. you know, some, no, someone's absolutely. amazing, but they're That's shitty great, auditioners. Man. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool that you go like yeah. way above and beyond the call yeah. of duty. No yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good um, uh, but mm -hmm. I have wait, there's more. <laughs> um, so 
in the process of casting, do you make, is it, how do I ask this? How much money do I make? No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. Because we know you'll tell us that. Well, we know you're a gazillionaire. Well, hold on. Let me just let me count. Let me, let me count. Right uh, let me count. No. What is? Do you always keep in mind to maybe give opportunity to maybe some of the newer people that yes, are talented? Yes. If they're if yes and no. Yes um, and no. Explain that. I'm absolutely that. a snob. I'm absolutely a snob. I don't believe in giving opportunity to lazy people who just want to be famous. Right, of course. I hate those people, and I'm not yeah. shy about it. Yeah. Um, so, a couple times, a friend of a friend who's a real estate agent, and he wants to get into managing, and he has, you know, this friend that he's probably trying to shtup, and he's like, oh, I want you to meet Shtup. Yeah. You know. Shtup. What does that mean? Shtup. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> So he's like, I want you to meet my friend. He's a model, and he's trying to get into acting mm. and all of this stuff. And I, I said, for what purpose? I don't cast like pretty boy number one. Yeah. Right. For what? Has he taken classes? You know, has he done plays? Has he done blah, 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 all this stuff? No, he hasn't. Right. I will. I can tell you right now, I will never hire him. I'm happy to have coffee with you guys and, you know, shoot the shit and talk about life. But yeah. I can tell you right now, I'm never going to hire that guy. Right. Right. Because no training, no experience, no, no, um, what's the word that I'm looking, accountability. Mm -hmm. As a performer yeah. and as a part of a team that needs to make this item of art slash commerce on a certain deadline, you have people relying on you, they, there's that, no yeah. accountability. I was just going to say, yeah. exactly, yeah. you have people relying well, on yeah, you. Well, yeah, because you're putting your reputation. Yeah. I mean, it's the whole production. You know, you're talking it, about a hundred million dollar video game or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, or a five million dollar movie or a 20 million dollar movie or whatever. Why would I hire that guy? What's the incentive? Right. Yeah. I don't, right. it's not charity. Like, no. I do a lot of charity work, but my career is not one of those things. Yes. So is yeah. there opportunity for the new person who is a go-getter and great yeah, and studying. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But look, well, I mean, I come it's from... It's important because there's a lot of people out right. there and then when talking about video games and animation and stuff like that, totally. a lot of people will say, oh, you know, Celebrities and, you'll you know, have a better chance of winning the lottery and blah, blah. That's so not true. And it's, yeah, that's exactly it. That Can you so... explain that? Can you tell them? Okay, people at home. Um... <laughs> I think in any field, in any art, any job, any career, if you put your mind to it, if you train, if you educate yourself, if you're dedicated, if you are um, proactive, I don't, I don't believe in limitations in life. I mean, the thing is, is I make such a great living and yeah. I work on awesome projects. I never planned to be a casting director growing up. Mm -hmm. It's something I just sort of fell into and I'm like, Okay, well, if I'm going to do this, I want to work on the best shit out there. Yeah. How do I do that? That's cool. I don't want to just, you know, kind of plot along Dabble in life. That, and yeah. and yeah. I want to, if I'm going to do something, I want to be the best at it. How do I do that? Yeah. And I met with agents and I'm represented by, you know, by a great agency. And I, you know, set up generals and I took people to lunch and I, you know. This is how you began your yeah. casting? This is how, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, did you, was this something that like one day you woke up and you're like, you know what? I think I want to be, how did that start for you? Let us give It us started little... because I was working at a talent agency and I was like, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing at the talent agency? Uh, um, I was an assistant. Okay. I was an assistant to the head of the agency. And um, I was like, I, I don't, I don't, for me, it's so interesting because part of my, oh, um, part of my career is to negotiate terms of service, right? Uh -huh. But I'm, pro I'm, I hate to make a, like a stupid joke, but I'm like the only Jew that doesn't like talking about money. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't like to argue about it. I don't like to discuss it. Like, here's the comfort zone. Here's the sweet spot. Take it or leave it. I don't, I don't, right. yeah. you know, yeah. I'm not going to like argue with someone about, you know, an, an extra 50 cents here or 50 cents there or cutting off 15 minutes of record time or whatever. Like, yeah. be grateful. You want to do it or you don't. If you don't, I'm totally cool with it. But I want to put together a group that wants to be there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think the point that I wanted to make is you would ask me earlier, are there room for new people? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of went off on this tangent about my own career. Sorry, and I asked you a question. No, but, no, no, but that's, off. it's all, but the thing is, is in anything in life, you have to do your homework, you totally. have to be dedicated, and you have to come up with a game plan. You know, especially mm -hmm. in artistic endeavors, your brain has to be half commerce and half art. 
Mm. But yeah. you can't negate the commerce part of it. You, it is show business. Yeah. Yes. And so every film, the point of it is to make money for the people paying for it. Mm-hmm. You know, the people creating it, it's to make art and move people. Right. But they have to pay for it somehow. And so those people want to make their money back. So right. every single endeavor is art meets commerce. And so if you, especially in an artistic field, there are so many people that want to, <clears throat> to work in show business. They want yeah. to be famous. They want right. to be on TV. They want to do plays. They want to do all of that stuff. So there's no shortage of people. Mm-hmm. However, there is absolutely always a shortage of talented people. Mm. Talented people that are reliable are like mm, 15 and 100. Yeah. Really? Yeah, and it's so unfortunate because I find my job not being, oh my God, there's so many great options, my job is how do I weed through all of the people that are undeserving and untalented to try to get those people that I know would be a great fit? Because yeah. even my job is I have a wish list, right? It's like being a little kid at Christmas. Yeah. You know, you have a wish list and you're like, gosh, I hope Santa brings me this, this, and this. I would like Santa to bring me a Porsche. And you're <laughs> like, well, Santa can't afford a Porsche. Okay. How about a Barbie? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. you sometimes you don't have Porsche money, right? Mm-hmm. Meaning the producers, you know, might have a five million dollar piece, um, and they might want Brad Pitt to star in it, and unless it's really riveting and he gets to executive produce it and he puts his creative stamp on it, what's the incentive? Right. He is five million dollars to make his own stuff. Right. Why would he do somebody else's? So to me, those are the constant conversations that I have in terms of I'm looking for the best out there. I'm hoping and praying that everyone will be awesome when they walk in the door. But even like in my searches, I have limitations because, you know, it's like dating. I might want to date so-and-so, but he's not interested. Right. So I got to, you know, go to the prom with my second choice. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, right. And it doesn't mean that that second choice isn't super rad. But sometimes you've got to work down the list. Right. And so sometimes, totally. for me, casting is coming up with that list and going, gosh, I wish so-and-so was interested in doing this strange role in a video game, but they're not, but they would be so awesome in it. Right. Okay, who else would be awesome in it? Who mm-hmm. else? Who else? And sometimes it's just like six degrees of, you know, six degrees of whatever, right? right? Okay, so there was one episode of Law and Order where that guy was blah, blah, blah. So his wife in that, I also saw her in an episode of, let me just blah, 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 look it up. And yes, I'm, that's who I want to get in, in this piece. Wow. You know, so it's... Do you only accept through agency submissions? Or not necessarily. You... I mean, there are, a lot of, there are a lot of roles that are really hard to cast. I think... If it's a lead and, you know, and it requires certain expertise. So the thing, I'll I'll do a search. Um, A couple of things, I had to do searches for actors that spoke uh, foreign languages. Japanese, Korean, German, French, all of these different things. Yeah. Where, you know, agents just want to make money. That's their job. Mm -hmm. So they're going to take on the most commercially viable options. And so if someone falls into a niche category or outside the age demographic, or, you know, you don't, they're kind of counterculture in some way. Mm -hmm. Not that many agents will look to represent them. Right. So if I go only to agents and managers and I say, I need a half black, half Chinese, little little person that speaks French, Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you no one will have that. Right. Right, right. But if I do a broader search and I am creative, you know, maybe I search in Cirque du Soleil, right? That would be genius because it's an international cast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so there might be <clears throat> a half black, half Chinese little person that speaks multiple languages. Totally. Right. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, and so, you never know. But yeah. agents are like, meh, so it's too specific. What are they going to make money once a year from that person? So they don't right. tend to represent them. Exactly. But, right. So my friend loves to order Ubers. And, you know, everywhere he and I go, we'll, he'll order an Uber. He doesn't like to drive anywhere. So uh, an Uber picked us up. We were going out of town. Um, an Uber driver picked us up. And he um, was physically Asian. And then he opened up his mouth and he had an Argentinian accent. No. Ah. 
Nice. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, because, you know, yeah. everybody lives everywhere, everywhere exactly. right? right? Yeah. So he spoke, it, it, you know, he was driving or whatever, and he spoke, and I was like, oh, I said, oh, de donde eres? And he's like, de Argentina. And I was like, oh, you know, and we started talking Spanish. And then, like, How do you know Spanish? School. I'm okay. a nerd. That's really good. And he turns around, and he's Asian, and I was like, what? what? <laughs> I was like, where's your family from? And he's like, Korean. And I was like, Annyeonghaseyo. And he was like, oh, you speak Korean and Spanish? And I was like, yeah, and a little bit of Hebrew. Yeah. And <laughs> Some oh, English, ruined so you know? English, <laughs> right? Oh. But it's like, oh my gosh, what if I was looking for a Korean who spoke Spanish right. and Korean, right? Right, Korean yeah. in appearance, yeah, but spoke Spanish. Mm-hmm. I mean, who's gonna, you know, no one's gonna. Yeah, go, I'll sign gonna you up right that. now. You can only right. find out right. through Uber. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> through all Uber. Through Uber drivers. There you go. Right? That's gonna yeah. be your new source for casting. So, Uber. So, so let's <laughs> let's talk about the people. Outside of Los Angeles. Yes. Are do they, they exist? Are there people there outside? There are a few. <laughs> there are a few. Um, do, I only know the coasts. <laughs> yeah. And maybe yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Are they ever Jews considered are to live there. for... What? Are they ever considered for your projects? Yeah, of course. Why not? How does that work for someone who's not local? I mean, are they like living in their basement with no access to anything, never taken a play, not... I mean, there are talent agencies everywhere. There are casting yeah. directors everywhere. I mean, I guess the question, how far do you reach? How far do you search? And For, and, vo- for animation? Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is, is I always want to hire the best people. Right. And so the best people are not the people that haven't done it before and have no agents. Right. Because if they were really that dedicated... They'd they have would move. They would have an agent. I mean, right. even Tom Kane doesn't live here. He lives in right. Kansas City, right. right? Right. That doesn't mean that he is like a random. It right. means he just doesn't live here. But yeah. you know, yeah. he's with CESD and he works all the time and he's yeah. in half of he's, my games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, you're kind of asking two different things, which is, if someone doesn't live in Los Angeles, but they, you know, are are in Minneapolis doing tons of theater, right? Or Chicago doing tons of theater. Mm-hmm. Can they have an active career in entertainment? Yes, absolutely. I mean, if they're, you know, in their basement whacking off, hoping to be on TV one day, that's a whole... <laughs> right. That that's be, not going to happen. So that, whoever's out there like that, forget about it. That's a different it. industry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we're not, we're not, yeah. Well, we are in the valley. Yeah. It's Just true. saying. This is true. Possibilities are everywhere. <laughs> Just and, depends and we'll on it's, what you want out of your life. Uh, it's you a know? different show. That's our spinoff show. We're going to take a break <laughs> after this uh, national commercial for condoms. <laughs> This might be a really silly question, but is there ever anything that you could hear in an audition that would just automatically disqualify that person for even being considered? Yeah, boring people. So, so Life's too just, short just for boring people. It just falls down to, to talent. Yes, of course. I mean, unless they say F you, like F you, Ivy Eisenberg, give me the part in the audition. Is there, that would is probably there, is there, is there a such slate? thing as like a bad slate? No, but usually the agent's late. Oh, can I tell you something funny? Can I tell you a funny story? Okay. Um, I was casting a video game. I went to USC film school. Right. Um, I started off in theater school being a BFA acting major. And then after my first year, I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to be an actor at all. I want to work in production. I want to work in film. Applied to the film school, graduated with a film degree. Um, I had a good time in college. I was very studious, got good grades, like super awesome grades, did everything. But, you know, I kind of like, um, liked the boys. <laughs> so, as they say. <clears throat> you do know that this show is watched all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, not boys as an underage. Well, no, 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 I'm just, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, well, so we're like, clarifying I, that. I likes the men. That's good. I okay. likes the men. Okay, there we go. I likes the men. It's a full service education. Right. So, um, <laughs> Indy Hughes. Uh, so, <laughs> there was a guy there that I had a physical relationship with, whatever. It was like a little fling, fine. Didn't think much of it. Tried to, like, rekindle it. Didn't work out, whatever. 20 years ago, okay? Aging myself, yes, but 20 years ago. Put out a breakdown for a thing. An agent calls me and says, <laughs> oh, <no. clears throat> and says, uh, so and so is really perfect for this part, but he says you guys have bad blood, and I'm hoping that you'll look past it to audition him. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Like, and she's like, well, apparently there was a thing, and I was like, come on, dude, that was 20 years ago. I'm like, my God, <laughs> like I'm not harboring anything. Yeah. 
So I'm like, of course I remember him. Of course he can come in. I'm not going to hold a grudge. So literally, there is nothing someone can do yeah. to get on my bad side because I don't mix you know, business and personal from an acting perspective if that same person had come in and was like, oh, I'm so, I didn't have a chance to look at these. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure I, I get this character. Yeah. The, 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 the. Yes, that would get on my bad side. Yeah. But like, apparently people that dumped me, I don't hold grudges against. You're so evolved. I didn't even remember. Wait a minute, you dumped him. Remember? <laughs> I don't even remember. I mean, no, I remember. The, yeah. The, yeah. I remember the scenario, which was quite fun. But I, <laughs> I... I mean, who who cares how it ended? So the point being, it's like, I don't... The, the only time I hold grudges are when people... Look, I make my living dependent on actors. Yeah. Which yes. is pretty scary. I mean, let's that be real. That is pretty scary. It's pretty scary that I can only get paid and make my living if a group, a community that's known for its artistry, but not necessarily always its business sense, mm -hmm. if I have to rely 100% on them to earn a living. To yeah. me, that's pretty scary. And luckily, I love actors. Yeah. But <clears throat> the only things that upset me are bad work ethic, lack of preparation, lack of thought, lack of commitment. Yeah. Then I get super, super pissed off. Yeah. Like yeah. I, 99% of the time I'm funny Ivy, but if you want to see bitchy Ivy come in ill prepared, because I have no qualms with saying something. Yeah. 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 And you have to. Well, and I don't think, I think LA is too fucking crowded. It's too, there's too long a line at Trader Joe's, you know. <laughs> well, every Trader that's Joe's. Survive the parking that's a Trader lot. Joe's right, virus yeah. right there. The There's no lot. parking. There are too many freaking bodies here. So unless you're going to come here and be prepared yeah. and really give of yourself, of your mind, of your thought, of your time, of your heart, of your spirit. Don't come. Forget about Stay it. Stay where you are. Well, and you have it, there's a certain too much number, traffic on the 101. Yeah. You have a certain number of the spots. And if someone comes in and stinks up right. the room right. or sends in something that is not. Then I have to work stop. harder. Right. You have to work harder and somebody or else. Or smarter. Yeah. You know, or yeah. like you said earlier, not give a new person a chance. Right. Mm -hmm. Because what if they were in a touring company of whatever, you know, cats or Les Mis for yeah. 10 years and I just don't know them because it was a touring company of a show. Of course. Right. But they are spectacular especially when it comes to performance capture which is physicality and a lot of movement and mm -hmm. a lot of pantomime and creation and space work yeah. right? Right, right so theater people are fantastic at that and then if I can't see one of those people because you know idiot right. Interstein came in and you know stunk up the room yeah, yeah. I mean yeah of course that means I have to work harder yeah. and longer mm -hmm. hours totally. and more right. sessions right. And so which we don't want yeah yeah right um so you did say that you cast sometimes, well, you consider demos. When you have kind of a, a group of contenders, you will do yeah. it deeper. Yeah, so because what is I want to see if they have any range. I mean, sometimes yeah. somebody is, you know, it's like when you go to, I go to a lot of theater, but I also go to like monologue festivals and showcases and stuff like that because there are new people to be discovered, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'm like, man, is this, am I doing myself a disservice by liking this person because what if they've been working on this monologue for 10 years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if this is like the only monologue that they've ever, that they've right. ever that they done, yeah. that they've perfected and it took 10 years to get there, right? Yeah. 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 I know so, somebody like that, but. Yeah, it's crazy where you're like, oh my God, you're a genius. And then you ask them to do something else and then they, they suck. Can't. They're yeah. like, I'm a one hit wonder. Yeah. Right. So, so what do that's you the hear thing. in it's demos? Like, like what do you hear in range. demos? Range. Range. Range, yeah. talent, accents. But mostly just range. Right. Like, if everything, does the cadence for everything sound the same? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many factors when it comes to voiceover, yeah. right? Right. Accent, tone, comedic timing, cadence. You know, there are certain people that I, like, I love. But to me, you can, you when you hear them, you hear them, right? Like Patrick know. Warburton. Yeah. Yeah. When is he, when is he not going to sound like Patrick Warburton? He's hilarious. He's fantastic. I totally. love his comedic timing. Right. But I can hear his voice a mile away, mm -hmm. whatever right. character, because yeah. I hear that cadence, right? Yeah. And right. and a certain tonality, even if he's doing an accent. Yeah. Right. Will you listen to demos, typically prefer, what, MP3, or will you go with somebody's site to listen to their stuff, too? Yeah, anything's fine. Whatever. I'm not picky. Here's a question for you. How'd when I get you, so beautiful? Yeah, how did you get so beautiful, Ivy? 
Working in voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> Laying by the pool, listening to auditions all day. You have um, vitamin D. So, so, so. Out of your pool. So, this, that's no, sweat, this is honey. Important. That's sweat. I, I thought about this question. I'm, I'm going to ask her this because she'll know the answer okay. to this and I want to know. So, you. An animation job comes in, or a yeah. video game uh, uh, thing comes in. First, for I do audition. my happy dance. Yeah, yes. first, mama gets more Chanel purses. No. <laughs> and then, so these are the specs. The specs are not cartoony, only natural, real sounding voices. Ugh, now, so frustrating because that's how my producers are on one of my shows right now. But the thing is, is you have to find a happy medium, yeah, and you so have to also reinterpret <clears throat> yeah. what they say with what would fit. And so, a lot of times, okay, you know, there's a lot of different types of animation. There's yeah, prime time, right. there's Saturday morning, um, there is like more gritty, um, there's more cartoony, meaning like animals and noises and, you mm -hmm. know, animation for children. Right. right. So I think as animation evolves into a, a medium for adults, People want to connect to the emotion of it, mm -hmm. and they don't want to be taken out of it by a sense of over-exaggeration or falseness. I see. Mm -hmm. And so the colloquialism for that is really now cartoony because people associate cartoons with Saturday morning. Bugs right. Bunny. Yeah, and oh, for, their, yeah. for their six-year-olds. Right. Well, but I remember watching Fred Flintstone as more older than six and seven. Right. Yeah. Maybe right. I'm no, just but I mean a little... like the voice, very cartoony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little developmentally delayed. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, but that's the thing. It's like a lot of people don't want it cartoony but there is a vocal stylization yeah. to animation right. where if it's just very very real it falls flat because when people are conversing in a real way it's not heightened in a, in a necessarily animatable way animatable and in yeah. an engaging yeah. way mm -hmm. right not everyone in their yeah. normal conversations is vocally engaging yeah right. so it's not right. totally Real. It's, it's not just real with a little something in but, there. But yeah. knowing the audience, a little bit and of knowing for a sparkle or a little something. Sparkle, yeah. Little sparkle, yeah. And finding out who it's for is huge. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah that's gonna be I mean, if it's prime time, if it's gritty, right. um, if it's adult, if it's kids, exactly. If it's All junior. Well, that concludes part one with the fabulous Ivy Eisenberg. And it was encrusted Absolutely. with information. But you know what's even better? Part Next two. week we got tons more questions yeah. that you guys want to know, so don't miss that. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Absolutely. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always have time for a little bit. Come on, come on, come on and get bugs with us. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.